Welcome back. So, let us continue uh, where we left off before the break. Uh, I shall be talking now about the applications of short term interest rate futures for example, treasury bill futures. Now, the first and the very obvious application is that the T bill futures lock in the forward rate. How, how does it happen? It is quite simple. Let us say again we will refer to our timeline. Today, let us say is T equal to 0 and let us say T equal to capital T is the maturity of the futures contract and let us say T equal to N is the maturity of the underlying treasury bill. Now, what does it mean? If I take a long position in the futures contract, what does it mean? It means that I will receive a T bill at T equal to capital T which will mature at T equal to capital N. And the important part is that the price that I am going to pay for this bill will be settled at T equal to 0. So, the price is agreed at T equal to 0, the price is agreed as of today and the actual settlement of the bill will take place at T equal to capital T and uh, the settlement of the uh, proceeds of the bill, the maturity of the bill that is will take place at t equal to n. Let me repeat the settlement of the futures contract by the delivery of the bill will t take place at t equal to capital T. The settlement of the bill by payment or the uh, of the proceeds uh, by the issuer will take place at t equal to n. Now, the price is known at t equal to 0 and that will be paid at t equal to capital T. So, this let us call this f 0, 0 comma t comma n and the price at which the uh, the bill is going to be liquidated the bill is going to be settled by credit to the uh, by the issuer of the face value of the bill at t equal to n let us call it f n now the important part here is that both these quantities f n that is the face value of the bill and f 0 which is the price at which the bill is going to be delivered to the party who is long in the futures are known at t equal to 0. And because both these things the cash inflow and the cash outflow or vice versa is known at t equal to 0, the return or the interest rate over the period from t equal to capital T to t equal to a n is known and fixed at t equal to 0. So, that is how the treasury bill futures lock in the forward rate. Let me read it out for you. Assume that you take a long position in a T bill future at the rate of F 0, 0 comma T comma N that matures for delivery at T equal to capital T and entails delivery of a T bill of face value F. The T, T bill matures for repayment at T equal to N. So, you will receive F an amount of cash flow of F at T equal to N and in the price that you have paid that is F 0 at this will be uh, this will occur at t equal to capital T, but both these quantities f 0 and f are known at t equal to 0. This means that you receive the t bill at t equal to capital T and pay the price f 0 at the same time that is t equal to capital T. However, this price is fixed at t equal to 0. This is the catch, this is the important part. You will receive the proceeds the face value of the bill at t equal to n. Hence, your cash flows at t equal to capital T that is minus f 0 and t equal to n that is plus f are fully determined at t equal to 0 subject to marking to market. Thus, you have effectively locked in the forward rate for the period from t equal to t to t equal to n. So, this is quite simple. This is a uh, rather forward uh, forthright application of the T bill futures, you lock in the forward interest rates over the life of the T bill uh, that forms the substratum of the futures contract. Now, you can also lock in a spot rate for a maturity which is different from the maturity for which traditional spot rates are available in the uh, in the uh, financial or money markets. How can you do that? That is shown in the right hand side panel. What you do is at t equal to 0, you buy an n day t bill in the spot market and you sell a t bill future which has a maturity at t equal to capital T 
and entails the delivery of a uh, of a T bill which matures the T equal to capital N. Let me repeat, you take a long position in an N day uh, T bill which matures the T equal to capital N at which point you will get the face value of the T bill from the issuer of the instrument. And you also take a short position in a T bill future which matures for delivery at T equal to capital T and this futures contract is such that the underlying uh, T bill that will be uh, delivered under this futures contract will mature at T equal to capital N. So, the maturity of uh, uh, the T bill uh, which uh, you have taken a long position in and the T bill which will be delivered under the futures contract uh, is the same date T equal to capital N. So, what happens at T equal to 0 you pay the current price of the T bill that is minus P n and as far as the futures is concerned there is no transaction. Now, at T equal to capital T what will happen the T bill that you receive in the first leg of the transaction can be delivered against your obligation of the short obligation in the T bill futures contract because the date of maturity of the this T bill that you have received under the, uh, the purchase is the same as the maturity of the T bill that is to be delivered against the uh, short futures position that you have undertaken. So, this T bill that you have here can be ready or can be used for satisfying your delivery obligation at T equal to capital T against the futures contract. And what will you receive? You will receive the futures price F 0 0 to n which you have worked out uh, which you have agreed at T equal to 0. So, your cash outflow at T equal to 0 is known minus P n and your cash inflow is known at T equal to capital T and in other words you have logged in the spot rate between T equal to 0 and T equal to capital T. Now, we talk about hedging with interest rate futures. What are the basic principles? Let us assume that today is T equal to 0 and you take a long position that is you buy a 90 day T bill future that is T days to delivery. Let at any point in the interval 0 less than small t less than capital T that is that is any arbitrary point between 0 and capital T the interest rate make a drift downwards the interest rate goes down. If the interest rate goes down what happens to the price of the T bill? The price of the underlying T bill will go up in this spot market and because of the positive correlation that usually subsists between the spot market and the futures market the price of the T bill futures will also increase. In other words if the interest rate has gone down the price of the futures T bill futures is likely to go up. Now, because you have a long position in the T bill futures this one you have a long position in the T bill futures what will happen you will make a profit on this you will gain. Therefore, if the original position is such that a downward a fall in the interest rates results in a loss to you then you can come you can create a hedge by taking a long position in the T bill future because the interest rates when they fall down they go down they affect the spot uh, T bill prices which also affects the uh, futures T bill prices which increases and as a result of which you take, make a profit on your long position in the T bill future. So, if your original position your investment position is such that a downward decline in the interest rates results in a loss to you you can cover it by a long position in the T bill futures. So, let me read it out for you. Since you have a long position under the futures contract that is you have a right to buy the 90 day T bill underlying at the predetermined price which is lower your leg of the futures will command a futures value that is you will earn a profit. Hence, if your primary investment is such that you incur a loss due to decline in interest rates you incur a loss due to decline in interest rates then by taking this long position in T bill futures you will be able to compensate for the loss on the exposure by the profit that you make on the T bill futures. So, let us do an exam some examples please recall I have highlighted it in yellow when interest rates decrease long futures increase in value long futures yield in profit. So, let us take this example you hold a US dollars 10 million 91 day T bill 
which you will sell in one month's time because of your need to pay your creditors. Now, if the market interest rates increase, what will happen to the value of your portfolio? Value of your portfolio will decline. Uh, and if you want to hedge against a decline in value due to interest rates increase, what position will you take in the futures market? You will take a short position in the futures market because if you are short in the futures market and there is an increase in interest rates, the market prices of T-bills will fall in the spot market and correspondingly in the futures market as well. And because you have a short position in the hedge, you will make a profit on the hedge. Now, another example, you will receive dollars 10 million in 6 months time which you want to invest in T-bills for 90 days. If interest rates decline in the intervening 6 months, the price of T-bills will increase and you will get less face value of T-bills for your investment. For the same amount of money, you will be able to buy lesser uh, face value of T-bills. Thus, your return will decrease if the interest rates decline. Now, if the interest rates decline, that means your hedge should be such that if the interest rates decline, you should be able to make a profit. That is, in other words, you will take a long position in T-bill futures. You hope to issue dollar 10 million of 180 day commercial paper in 3 months time to borrow money. If interest rates increase, what will happen? If the interest rates increase in the intervening period, the price of the CP at issue will decline and in other words, the cost of servicing will increase or your cash flow that you receive at the point of uh, selling or of the uh, commercial paper will be lesser and this may adversely affect your projects also uh, due to paucity or scarcity of funds uh, and it will also increase the cost of servicing because the repayment has to be made at the face value. Now, in order to protect yourself against all this, what happens? You take a short position in T-bill futures whereby if the interest rates increase, you make a profit on the short position. Now, hedging with T-bills, let us look at the quantitative treatment. Hedging with T-bills, hedging an existing portfolio. You have an existing portfolio of T-bills and you want to hedge that T-bills portfolio against uh, fluctuations in value due to changes in interest rates, discount yields. So, the V S V 0 comma S is the value of your portfolio at T equal to 0. F S is the face value of your investment in T bills. F S is the face value. V 0 comma S is the market value of your investment at T equal to 0. Market value of your investment at T equal to 0 is V 0 comma S. F S is the face value of your investment and D 0 comma S comma 0 is the spot uh, discount yield at T equal to 0 and N is the maturity of the T bills that constitute your portfolio. Then, then we have this expression for V 0 uh, comma S that is equal to F S into 1 minus D S 0, where D S 0 is the discount yield please note not interest rate discount yield that pre that is prevailing at T equal to 0 on T bills with a maturity equal to capital N. And the corresponding equation at T, this is the equation at T equal to 0. And the corresponding equation at T equal to capital T, which is uh, the investment horizon or the point at which you are going to lift the edge, the point at which you are going to liquidate the investment, and this is the corresponding equation that you have. Now, please note n upon 360 is replaced by n minus t upon 360 because the remaining life of the T bills, please note the life of the T bills is capital N, your holding period is capital T. So, the remaining life of the T bills at the point at which you are going to liquidate them is equal to n minus t upon 360 and d s t is the discount yield that is to prevail uh, or that is expected to prevail at uh, t equal to capital T. Therefore, the change in value that is V T s minus V 0 s is equal to this expression. Uh, this is straightforward. Then you can write this let us call this equation uh, number 1, let us call this 2, let us call this 3 and let us call this 4. 
we can write equation number 3 in, in the form of equation number 4. The purpose of writing this as equation number 4 will be apparent in the next slide, but for this for the matter uh, there is only an algebraic rearrangement nothing more and using that algebraic rearrangement we are reorganizing equation number 3 to equation number 4 which can be written as equation number 5. Now, if you look at equation number 5 the this factor of equation number 5 the factor that I have enclosed in the box this factor depends on the initial yield which is known to you which is not a random variable which is a known parameter known quantity which is prevailing at t equal to 0. Therefore, this change in value or this component of d v this component of the change in value is redundant in so far edging is concerned because this is a fixed component f s is known to you d s 0 is known to you capital T is known to you. So, obviously, this factor is fixed at t equal to 0 and therefore, it does not form any uh, any ingredient in so far as the hedging process is concerned. So, this factor that I that I highlighted in the last uh, slide is the change in value even if the yield is unchanged. Hence, the change in value of exposure due to the yield change which is the factor or which is the quantum that is required or that is relevant in so far as hedging is concerned is given by this expression let us call it d s. This is the first component of equation number 5 you can see here this is d s and this we drop out. The first factor we rename as d s and the second factor we drop out. Now, for each futures contract what happens? P 0 comma f that is the price at the futures at t equal to 0 is given by this expression uh, we are all familiar with this and the price at t equal to capital T is given by the expression the corresponding expression which I have also enclosed within the box. So, f star f is the face value per futures contract therefore, change in value of n f futures d f is equal to this expression that is obtained by uh, subtracting A from B. So, d f is equal to minus 0 0.25 into n f into f star f into delta d f where delta d f is equal to d s t minus d s in 0. Okay. Now, we have two equations this is equation number 1 this is equation number 2. We have got an equation for the change net change or the relevant change in so far as our portfolio value is concerned. We have got equation number 2 which gives us the change in value of the futures. So, for minimum hedge ratio we can follow the uh, process that we followed for the minimum variance hedge ratio that we have uh, encountered a number of times earlier. And what we end up with is on, the, on simplifying the the process what we end up with is the number of futures contracts is given by equation number 3. Where what is beta? Beta is the regression coefficient between delta d s as the dependent variable and delta d f as the independent variable. N, mi n minus t is the number of days remaining after uh, the lifting of the hedge. Uh, uh, number of days uh, tenure to maturity of the T bills after lifting of the hedge. Uh, F s is the face value of your investment and uh, F s star is the face value per futures contract face value of T bills covered by one futures contract. So, this gives you the expression for the number of futures contract that you need to take a position in in order to optimize your hedge where we I repeat where we use the expression for the minimum variance hedge ratio uh, as derived in an earlier lecture. Observations. The entire stochasticity of yields is captured by the regression coefficient beta. There is no other please note there is no other term which is random in this in this expression except for beta. Beta, beta is the term that captures the randomness or the captures the fluctuations uh, uh, in the spot and future uh, uh, which are interacting for the hedging objective. If we assume parallel shifts of the spot yield curve 
and beta delta y s comma delta y f being the slope of the regression between delta y s comma delta y f is unity because interest rates for all maturities will change with the same amount and so the change in y uh, delta y f will be accompanied by an equal change in delta y s and vice versa. So, this is the special situation where beta turns out to be 1 in the special situation where we assume that the spot yield curve shifts parallel to itself. I repeat if we make the assumption special assumption that the shifts in the spot yield curve are parallel what happens is that beta becomes equal to 1. The value of the futures position is proportional to the remaining life. So, and you can see here this n is n f is proportional to n minus t. So, the value of the futures, for futures position is proportional to the remaining lifespan of the h t bills. Why is that? Because any yield shift will impact the value of the t bills over this span. If there is a yield shift, it will affect the t bills prices in ref with reference to the remaining life of the t bills, not what has already happened. So, if there is a, if there is a change in the interest rates, change in the yields, it will affect the value of the t bills with reference to the remaining life of the t bills, not with reference to what has already elapsed. Hence, greater this lifespan, greater the remaining life of the t bills, greater will be the price change of the t bills for a given yield shift. Let us do an example. Today is t equal to 0, x y z limited is holding 364 day, let us call it 12 1 year t bills of face value of US dollars 10 million with a maturity of 12 months that is uh, 1 year. Its investment horizon is up to t equal to 2 months. So, although n is equal to 12 months, t is equal to only 2 months. The company decides to hedge through 3 month t bill futures with delivery at t equal to 5 months. So, at t equal to 5 months the futures entail delivery, but obviously they will be liquidated at t equal to 2 months when the hedge will be lifted. The hedge will be lifted at t equal to 2 months by the closing of the futures contracts or futures position. The IMM index quotes at t equal to 0 and t equal to 2 months of the 3 month t bill futures turn out to be 88 and 86 respectively. Spot discount yields on T bills at T equal to 0 and T equal to 2 months. Please note these are discount yields. So, spot discount yields on T bills at T equal to 0 and T equal to 2 months are 9 percent and 11 percent respectively. To work out the extent to which the hedge has operated successfully, assume yield shifts to be parallel. That means, beta is equal to. Now, this is the formula for calculating the number of contracts that you have in the right hand top panel. We have got all the values here, value of the portfolio, we have got this is F s, life of the table, this is n, period of hedging, this is capital T, residual life, this is n minus T. So, and the face value of the futures, this is F star F. So, using all these expressions, uh, what we find is that the number of futures is equal to 33. Please note everything is given in terms of months. So, the formula is modified uh, instead of the 360 into 0.25, we write it as 90. 90 corresponds to 3 months. So, if you transfer, uh, transform all the quantities from days to months, you will have a factor of 3 years. That is precisely what is used and we end up with 33 contracts for hedging. Now, let us look at the performance of the hedge. The futures positions is quite simple. The future quote at t equal to 0 was 88. The futures quote at t equal to 2 months was 86. The discount yield is therefore, 12 percent at t equal to 0 or 0 0.12 and the discount yield at t equal to 2 months was 14 percent or 0 0.14. The futures price worked out as per the standard formula that I have shown here. I have underlined now, uh, works out to 
9700000 per 1 million value face value of futures at t equal to 0 and 9650000 per million of face value of futures at t equal to 2 months. Therefore, the profit per contract because and please note you will ha have a short position uh, profit per contract is 5000 and because there are 33 futures contracts so 5000 into 33 that is 165000. Let us now look at the cash position. The discount yield at t equal to 0 is 9 percent and the discount yield at t equal to 2 months is 11 percent. The time remaining to maturity of the T-bills at T equal to 0 is 1 year and the time remaining to maturity of the T-bills after the investment horizon of 2 months is equal to 10 months that is equal to 0 0.833 of the year. Using these quantities and the standard expression for the discount yield what we have is the price of the T-bill at T equal to 0 was 91000 per 1 million of T-bill, the price of the T-bill at T equal to 2 months per 1 million of face value is equal to 90833. Now, if we work out the price of the T-bill, now this is the important factor. If I work out the price of the T-bill for 10 months, for a maturity of 10 months with the original yield of 9 percent, with the original yield of 9, I get 925000. Therefore, due to the increase in yield, the damage, the detriment that my portfolio has suffered is equal to 925000 minus 908333 per 1 million of T-bills that is equal to 1666 per 1 million of T-bills. Our investment value is 10 million face value uh, of T-bills and therefore, the loss that we have suffered on account of this increase in discount yield is equal to 166666.6667. So, the futures hedge has compensated us to the extent of 165000. The lo actual loss was 166666.67 and therefore, the net loss on the hedged position is equal to only 166.67 US dollars on an investment value of US dollars 10 million. Now, we talk about hedging of a futures investment, hedging of a future investment. Uh, in the previous case, what we did? We talked about hedging of a existing portfolio of T-bills. We have a portfolio of T-bills and we take a position in order to hedge ourselves. Here, we are planning to make an investment and uh, it is the planned investment that we want to hedge against fluctuations in interest rates. The process is pretty much similar. However, the, the difference is that here we have used interest rates instead of discount yields. So, F is that is equal to V s into uh, 1 plus R s 0. What is R s 0? R s 0 is the interest rate prevailing at t equal to 0. And R s t is the interest rate that is prevailing at t equal to capital T. Therefore, corresponding to R s 0 uh, with an investment value of V s, I could make a face value investment as equal to F s. Now, because the interest rates have changed from R s 0 to R s capital T, the face value of my investment or the money that I have used to that is V s can be used to have an investment of face value F star s. So, the damage or the detriment that has occurred due to a change in interest rates is equal to D f which I can write as F star s minus F s that is equal to V s into R s t minus R s 0 and that can be into the in the um, time factor that is n minus t upon 3 six three because your investment is going to be made at you today you are at t equal to 0 your investment is going to be made at t equal capital t and the life of the in, uh, investment is equal to t equal to n so it is this factor which is relevant in so far as calculating the face value is concerned okay and as far as the future therefore we have dfs is equal to this expression 
which which I have encircled. As far as the futures is concerned, it's pretty much the same situation, same thing. We continue to use uh, futures discount yields, and we end up with the expression for DF as the same as we had in the previous example in the previous derivation. Then when we try to arrive at the uh, optimal number of contracts, we get the expression that we have in the box here. So, this is the expression that I have when we we are trying to hedge a prospective investment in T bills. Uh, uh, we are expecting to receive some surplus funds and we want to make an investment in T bills. Uh, please note in this derivation, the one de important part that we have used is that we have used interest rates instead of discount factors. Now, on the basis of the derivation that we have done here, we have an example here. Mm, it is t equal to 0 and the treasurer of company x expects to receive dollars 1 million in t equal to 3 months and wishes to invest this in a 6 month t bill until t equal to 9 months. The treasurer fears the fall in interest rates which would imply that is investment beginning in t equal to 3 months will earn less interest. The because if there is a fall in interest rates uh, naturally uh, the value or the face value of it that he can get by using the same amount of money will be lesser because uh, the prices will increase. The treasury buys goes long 3 month T bill futures today T equal to 0 with maturity in T equal to 4 months. The IMA index quotes at T equal to 0 and T equal to 3 of the T bill futures turn out to be 89.2 and 90.3. Thus, investment interest rates at T also spot in investment rates at t equal to 0 and t equal to 3 months are 11 percent and 9.6 percent. Work out the extent to which the hedge has operated successfully, assume yield, search, the yield shifts to be parallel. So, we can assume beta is equal to 1. This is the solution. It is quite straightforward, but absolutely on the same lines as we did in the previous example. So, I will not uh, devote time to this. With this, we come to the end of this course. I hope it, ha it has been an enjoyable learning experience for all the learners. Now, before I sign off, an important thing, there are certain topics which have either been left out or have been dealt with marginally. I would request the learners, I would sincerely request the le learners to refer to the video lectures on financial derivatives and on security analysis and portfolio management, uh, the links to which are already there in, a, in the first presentation that would uh, help the learners significantly in understanding, in having a holistic view of this entire subject uh, for preparing for various professional examinations. Thank you and all the best.